Hello, I'm David Hughes. Welcome to Your Perfect Body, the podcast of the Esoteric Teaching Community. Today's selection is an essay entitled The Root of All Spiritual Paths. The Vedas are the context of all the Vedic arts and sciences, including yoga and tantra. Similarly, as the infinite wellspring of absolute truth, the esoteric teaching is the source, the root meta-knowledge, and the context of the Vedas. Therefore, it is impossible to understand the Vedas completely and accurately, unless and until one has realized the absolute truth of the esoteric teaching. Similarly, it is impossible to perfect Vedic spiritual paths like yoga and tantra, until one understands that these are simply external techniques to provoke our spiritual desires and help us realize the esoteric teaching. The esoteric teaching is meta-knowledge, or the ontological and epistemological context, providing the ultimate meaning and purpose behind all philosophies, religions, and spiritual paths. One who has realized the absolute truth of the esoteric teaching can derive all other knowledge from it. The absolute truth is one, but the approaches to it are many and various, including the wisdom of the Vedas and all other religious and spiritual paths. Nevertheless, to actually realize the complete esoteric teaching requires initiation into an authentic esoteric school by a master teacher, one who has realized the esoteric teaching. Therefore, to determine which of the many spiritual techniques is appropriate for a given individual and situation requires great wisdom and complete realization of the esoteric teaching. As a perfect expression of the esoteric teaching, the Vedic wisdom is absolute truth, true for all beings in all conditions, places, and times. In other words, it is universally relevant and useful throughout all eternity. This is both an advantage and a difficulty. The universality of Vedic knowledge helps prove that it expresses absolute truth. On the other hand, it also makes ascertaining which instructions of the Vedas apply to our specific time, place, and situation very challenging. For example, according to the Vedic wisdom, there are four historical ages or yugas, Satya Yuga or the Age of Enlightenment, Dvapara Yuga or the Age of Great Kings, Treta Yuga or the Age of Ritualistic Religion, and Kali Yuga, or the Dark Age of Ignorance and Quarrel. These four Yugas repeat cyclically for the entire duration of the material universe. In each successive Yuga, the religiosity and spiritual realization of people in general decreases by one-fourth until it is restored at the beginning of the next cycle. Therefore, the process of self-realization appropriate for each Yuga is different. It is useless to attempt a process suitable to another historical period, since without the proper conditions one cannot complete it successfully, and may in fact attain contradictory results. Determining which Vedic instructions are appropriate for a particular time and person is an extremely delicate matter, but one which is absolutely necessary to derive the ultimate vet benefit from Vedic study. Given the vast complexity and extensiveness of the Vedic literature, this task is only for an expert in high-level knowledge of the Vedas. An empirical approach cannot possibly succeed, since by definition one is dealing in the realm of transcendence beyond the purview of limited human intelligence. Only a fully self-realized soul, familiar with the confidential purpose and methods of the Vedic system of spiritual culture, can have the slightest hope of making such a subtle judgment correctly.
It is precisely here that the unauthorized misinterpreters of the Vedas make their most serious errors. Therefore, to gain a realistic overview of the Vedic wisdom and assess the best route through its intricate paths, one must consult a spiritual master teacher who is properly situated in one of the four authorized Vedic disciplic lineages and who has realized the absolute truth of the esoteric teaching. This is the only way to ascertain the true meaning and intent of the Vedic literature without becoming bewildered by its abstruse complexities. To successfully reach this point, the aspirant must ascend through the three circles of the esoteric teaching. So, once again, I would like to remind you that the esoteric teaching is an ontological work. The esoteric teaching is the system of epistemological and philosophical uh, meaning behind the Vedic literatures. So, without being acquainted with the esoteric teaching, it is impossible to understand the Vedas. And indeed, we see many interpreters or misinterpreters who don't understand the Vedic literature because they have no realization of the esoteric teaching. The esoteric teaching is actually the root of the meaning of the Vedas, and without the esoteric teaching, uh, it would be impossible for the Vedas to even exist. Vyasadeva, in his wisdom, was considered an incarnation of Lord Vishnu. He derived the Vedic literatures from the oral tradition of the Vedic culture and wrote them down in such a way that they systematically lead to realization of the absolute truth. However, since the Vedas were designed for eternity, there are certain techniques in them that are not suitable for the present age, especially in Kali Yuga. It's very difficult to, produ to produce the conditions necessary for these different spiritual techniques like uh, silent meditation, temple worship, and great sacrifices. Therefore, anyone who attempts these techniques as a means of spiritual realization will generally fail. So, the esoteric teaching is the background knowledge, the meta-knowledge, from which the wisdom of the Vedas is derived. The Vedas, in turn, give us many techniques, collectively known as yoga. Hatha yoga, bhakti yoga, mantra yoga, tantra etc. There are many different techniques that are suitable for different types of people in different situations. And these techniques, in turn, give us realization of the esoteric teaching. So, the whole system is designed to gradually acquaint us with this ontological knowledge of the absolute truth. And that will change our consciousness so that we can restore awareness of our real nature, our real eternal identity, and our real perfect spiritual body. So, the techniques of yoga are external. In fact, even the philosophy of the Vedas is external. The real thing is when one practices this philosophy, when one practices these techniques, and attains spiritual realization, of the absolute truth. Remember we talked about context and content, that the context provides the meaning of the content. Without context, it's impossible to evaluate the meaning of something. Uh, in fact, certain uh, uh, perceptions may not even be possible to achieve without the proper context. We made the example of the black cat in the black room at midnight. It's impossible to see, but the same black cat in a white room at noon is very easy to see. So the context not only makes a difference in our perceptions, it actually determines whether or not we can perceive something at all. Therefore, when we approach spiritual life, if we do not have the knowledge and the wisdom of the esoteric teaching, even we may experience something spiritual, but we will be unable to perceive it 
because we lack the categories of meaning provided by the esoteric teachings' ontological wisdom. Anyone who knows the esoteric teaching knows the absolute truth and can derive all other spiritual knowledge from it. 